Hello everyone on the internet and thanks for tuning in and welcome to another episode of Taco Bros. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, our Discord server, Reddit, this very YouTube channel and Twitter at Taco Bros 71 And I'm Dragon the Run of the Tokyo Sasuke Media Center. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Discord and YouTube. And I'm Miku Pink of Irrational International. And don't follow me. Give me some space. Give me a little distance. You got your space, man. Well, I am Ryu Kiva of Ryu Kiva Toku. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Patreon, Discord, Reddit, my own YouTube channel, and on Twitter, as well as my ryukivatoku.wordpress.com. And this is a very special Sentai Talk. Today's Sentai Talk is brought to you by Tooth Decay. You can't leave dental records if you don't have any teeth. Tooth Decay. Well, I'm a British guy with the best teeth, so you can all say what you want about British people with teeth. So, firstly, we are ta- so we are talking a very special Sentai talk. We are going to be talking about Kira Mage episodes 36, 7, 38, and all the stuff from the Zenkai press conference. But firstly, I will wish my boy Dragon Zero on a very happy birthday. Uh, as 21, it- baby, let's go! And you have been, you know, so I'm actually surprised that you're alive for this talk. Let's put it that way. Well, I only had two shots last night, so. That's absolutely Happy fine. To you. Right, let's, let's not get the copyright trolls on us. Right. So, let's start with the Zenkaija news. Uh, what, right, so I'm, I'm going to ask you both. What did you guys think of the trailer? I loved it. It looks very interesting in it. I'm pretty sure it's going to be a very goofy um, season, but I do hold hope that there will be a dark tone to it, to all the goofiness, you know? So, like, from what we saw, the mecha fight actually looked pretty interesting. I saw, like, if you saw the mecha, like, there's a um, certain camera point of view that's very interesting that I haven't seen, I don't think, than Tokyo Joe. No, I cool. will say, I will say that camera angle reminded me of the first shots of Kira Major. So I'm not even going to say it feels original. I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to like jump in and say, like, I did enjoy the trailer. It had, like, a very, like, quirky vibe. I'm I'm a bit doubtful as to how deep these villains are. I think it is going to be a light-hearted series. As yeah, like we only get like a brief look at one of the like giant kaiju, and again, we all know that Zen Kaiju is going to be all about like not just the 45th team, but they are more looking at paying tribute to the Mecha, maybe because of a COVID thing. But I'm mm-hmm. going to quickly jump. Yeah, like before I talk about the cast a little later on, I'm going to say our our Zen Kaiser to me, he looks a bit old. And then we've got our mecha, our four mecha friends, who are neither here nor there. I mean, they look fine normally. Then they then have a ranger outfit, which looks fine as well. I'm a bit double-sided on what I think of their giant mecha forms. But I did like at the end where you see them jumping rope. That was quite funny. Do you have any more yeah, thoughts? Yeah, that's something do you, have any... and you should do. Thank you very much. Miku Pink, do you have any further thoughts? Um. Yeah, so I will be honest. I... I was kind of hoping, I know we've been talking a lot about how we want it to feel like a show uh, series. Um, what I've noticed a lot of times was like, even though they were dark, and even though they had like some very dark tones, you know, they... I mean, I mean were... to be fair, I'll give you your props, because again, like, if they're going for these massive, like, Showa throwbacks, that's fine, like, we've all spoken about that. Yeah. But... I mean, yeah, on one hand, I can see your point because Showa's very well known for being dark, with especially with the villains. But again, it's like we're in Reiwa and Heisei was a mixture of light and dark. So that's... I'll, I'll say that's... Uh, you know, that's... You know, we can only wait to be... We can only wait for that to be seen. I mean, separately, during the press conference of Zenkai Jup, they revealed the OP. And the one thing, massive props, so the massive props I'm going to throw out is to Chume Watanabe. This is the legendary 95-year-old producer who seems to have jumped onto this theme out of nowhere. I'll admittedly think that, you know, when they revealed this OP, that, I'll be honest, I didn't feel it was all that. But it's not bad either, right? I strongly it's... disagree with you. I think it's So you love it. I, I'm not surprised. Go on. Expand. Um... Like, I got a lot of Go Kyger as well as, um... 
a I little did get bit the Go Kaiju of vibes. And as well as early 1990s Sentai scene vibes as well. Not like I'm um, anything. Like, it's very catchy, I think. And um, I haven't heard anything from about the ending theme. I like. I remember American. Right, Fans I'll be talking that about was... that in a moment. Miku Pink, did you have any thought? Have you heard the OP? Firstly, um, I, I just was actually thinking though. It is interesting that almost every costume we're seeing for the characters, they have the ability to basically social distance regardless of what. Comes that's out. exactly it, and I think that's where we're kind of getting that vibe for this whole mecha like anniversary mm-hmm. thing because it's still a good twist but i can see the cogs turning literally the gears turning that's a pun by the way uh so talking about Chome, so talking about chome watanabe uh this guy has credits for old showa sentai kikaida inazuma but most importantly for me carmen rider black and black rx so Ooh. the song itself is performed by takashi suruno the former okay, Ultraman, Ultraman Diner. The former Ultraman Diner actor who's turned to singing. This OP, ex- you know, he expressed uh, wanting to really work on this OP and wanting to go on to Carmen Rider, ne- you know, Carmen Rider afterwards. Uh, whether he'll be doing it acting um, or musically, we don't know, but who knows. But it's, unlikely, but it's unlikely, it's unlikely that we will be getting a Zenkaija end theme. Um, so basically, I don't know if you noticed this, but I think the reason why they chose him was because right now, he's actually 45 years old right now. Oh, and I think that's why they might have actually picked him oh. to do the 45th Sentai. Whoa. I mean, yeah. that's a very, it's a bit name, of a stretch. Actually, I mean, I'll know. say it's a bit of a stretch. I mean, because it's still, because it's the 45th Sentai, and it is actually, I think they've kind of synchronized it to be the 45th year because i think it was 1976 if i'm not correct if i'm not mistaken 1975 is when it started but then they did um lupon versus pat and that changed things i don't know i think if, again we've had this conversation a million times boy again because you got zoodra as the 40th you've then got q ranger as the 41st You've then got what came after Q Ranger, Q Ranger. Uh, I think it was Lupin versus Pat. It was yeah. Lupin was the forty third. You then had Rio Soldier as the forty fourth. But then wait, Kira Major. <laughs> right. I guess I've lost count. Right. Ugh. Well, the thing is, Lupin versus Pat is considered two separate teams. No, but this is it because that would technically make. That would technically make I know. Zenkaija 46. No, hold on. It's, I know. It's, no, hold like, on. But... Wait, wait, do you count Neo Jetman? Are we going to count Neo Jetman? While no, we're, we're not counting Neo Jetman. Right. Whatever the number is, we know it's a 45th. We see 45 on Zenkaiser's head. That's all we need to do on that. So let's, oh, act, so let's actually talk. Let's actually here. talk about the Zenkaija cast. So we have yeah. Kaito, who's being dubbed the Bucker Leader. But is he really a red? I mean, we have the actual red, the Zoo Ranger themed Jock Duran. I like this name, and he's voiced by Shintaro Asanuma from Ultraman Geed. Jeed, um, you guys got thoughts on this character at the moment? Um, I don't know what alien he what played because I didn't get that far in Ultraman Geed. But um, I do know that Yellow though is played by Aaron from Attack on Titan. Which I've actually seen the first season and a little bit of season two. Well, Attack on Titan. I his yep. voice immediately I mean, as soon as I. Yep, Attack on Titan is a very popular anime in Japan. Um, I'll quickly throw. In America. Right, so. Okay, and the world. I mean, okay, so we have the Gower Ranger themed Yellow Chef, Gaon, voiced by Yuki Kaiji from Attack on Titan. So, Miku Pink, do you have any thoughts on Red and Pink so far? On red and pink, you said. Yeah. So red. So again, red is Duran, and Dragon. yellow is Galon, yellow. and okay. they both uh, they both have like their mecha that merged together as well. Um, I'm gonna be I really am kind of freaked out by Galon's uh, lion mecha form. I think Why? It just, what? Wait, which the ranger or is like civilian mecha form? No, the the mecha form where it's uh, the one that's actually the robot. You know. Oh, the giant. Um, yes. Okay. I mean, I'll, I'll be honest. Like, I'll get. I mean, I'll get to that when we talk about oh, the uh, oh, merchandising. Oh, 
But like, yeah, uh, talk, but talking about the character for uh, Gaon, I love his dreads. That's all I've got to say. Mm. Right. So talking about the next two, so we've got the introvert pink Majin, based on Magi Ranger, voiced by Yume Yitmiya Moto from SSS Gridman. Mm-hmm. And finally, the blue Bokinja themed Vroon, voiced by Takia Sato of Card Fight Vanguard fame, and also JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. So, okay, I'm gonna... I got. Go on. I thought when I was watching the press conference, I thought Blue was going to be played by Tetsu and Nada because his voice sounded very familiar, sim- similar to Tetsu and Nada. Right. So, so the stuff. guy who voices. Um... What was his name? Vroon, uh, Takia Sato. He is mostly what more well known for dubbing for dubbing foreign drama, but again, he does have a list of anime to his name, namely JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, which is more recent. Um, I mean, again, like just to talk about the looks. I mean, I'm definitely getting the Bokenja vibes from Blue and Pink. Like she's got that kind of sassiness to her, so I'm not too sure why they're making her an introvert. Uh, and but I do not still like, like that it, about I like her. I like I like the ribbons on her, I guess. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Pink, like Pink, like do you have any thoughts on Blue um, and Pink? I didn't. I do not like how she's super scared of everything. I like it makes the like. I kind of wish it was a guy who was just like the mainly scared one and not a girl again. You know, because I want them. I want to see them break the mold. And they can't really do that unless, you know, not make pink like a scaredy cat, you know. I'd rather see, like, maybe the red or white ranger be the one that's actually scared because, you know, they're put in charge of a team. But the thing is, I mean, at the end of the day, you're saying that, but the one thing that's highly established is we do have a backer leader. So I think we're going to get some crazy hijinks uh, from that. But just to round off the character talk, we then have the first revealed support character, a strange and bizarre but very unique grandmother for Kaito, which um, is a bit bizarre because the actress has expressed interest in becoming a ranger, so who knows what will happen this series. I heard she's also an, an old mod, um, idol. Of course you heard that. they were saying that it was going to be played by an idol. So I'm That's thinking... Thanks, too. So uh, this would have been the perfect time to introduce the first uh, male Pink Ranger. Per- possibly, but no. Instead, there's four Mecha. I mean, again, like at least when they did Zuo, at least when they did Zuoja, they had like four actors that were also animals. But this is, as far as we can see, these actors are not going to have human. Yeah, you know, these Mecha are not going to have like a human human form. They have like a civilian yeah. Mecha form. They have a Ranger form, and then they have a giant Mecha form. Which is, yeah, you know, again, I will get. I'm getting to this now. So the deluxe mecha will be released March the sixth for red and yellow, and blue and pink will be released on April the third. All four will be around that seven thousand five hundred yen mark. I'll let you guys. I'll start with Miku Pink. What do you, have you seen? What the mecha looks like? Yeah, you know, the uh, the merchandise so, looks like. What and what are your thoughts? Uh, I think the gallon's mecha form just kind of freaks me out, and it. It honestly looks a bit like a bootleg Voltron. Okay, I can kind of see what you're getting at. Have you ever been to like a store? You know, like the you're at like one of those places that sells like beef jerky illegally, but like they also have cheap booze. So you go there to pick up some mm-hmm. food. Then you go to the back, and there's like a bootleg Voltron and like a really, really dusty like. I think that's very specific to California, bro. Uh, so zero on zero on your thoughts on the deluxe mecha. Um, I thought the mecha looks somewhat interesting. Um, I like I get a lot of Go Buster, Kamen Rider Double, and um, maybe a little bit of um Kiva Majors mecha as well. Just it it looks weird, very weird. I'm gonna like, right. So just to round off the deluxe mecha, I'm gonna say I got 100% Kyo Ryuja vibes, uh, like especially with the way they draw the dinosaurs on the front. And the thing is, like we know they've all got a theme for a, from a particular series, but to me, I don't know why they all look like they've got a dinosaur drawn on them. Uh, I mean, like, mash, mishmashing red and yellow together, mishmashing blue and pink together. Again, that's probably that Kira Major vibe where they did mishmash blue and pink. So mm. I can kind mm. of see that. Um, 
but like just kind of the way it's like a square shoulder and a square chest plate. I mean, it's very far removed from Dai Zujin, but it's more akin to again Kyoryuja's mecha. Um, that's again, that's just my opinion. But I'm going to go on to find, you know, in terms of merchandising, I'm going to talk about briefly the Change Hero series. So the Change Hero series are the five rangers in a 12 centimeter form. Zen Kaiser being the only one without a transformation feature, whereas the other four go on, go from changing to their ranger form to their mecha form. They all retail each around the 1700 yen mark. Uh, they're all four, all five of them are going to be released on March the 6th, with the show to debut on March the 7th. Do you guys? Well, I'll start with Zeron. Uh, do you have any? Have you seen it? And do you have any thoughts? Yeah, look, I get a lot of SA figure art vibes, so hopefully you'll have the uh, maneuverability of this. Um, I'm not gonna lie, one. like when I looked at Zen Kaiser, he does look really good, and I thought it was a figure art, but then I read it was a different series altogether, the Change Hero series. So I'm definitely holding out for a figure art for Zen Kaiser, just because he looks mm. good, not necessarily if I'm gonna like the series or not. Miku Pink, mm-hmm. do you have any thoughts before we move on? Um, yes, I, I think uh, I love the design of Zen Kaiser. I honestly think it's one of the best. Like, yeah, you got him behind you, of course. Yeah. Um, but I mean, if you think about it, these these little stripes here. Yeah. The way the stripes kind of intersect. Here we go. I'm just gonna there. Mm-hmm. It's not translating very well into like toy form. Um, you think it does or doesn't translate well? It, it doesn't. Um, it doesn't. Why? I thought it looked. I thought the figure looked really good. I think the figure looks awesome, except for the shoulders. See, like, I mean, this is where I start plugging my own show, Taco Unboxing. The shoulders on certain figures are an absolute nightmare. That is all I'm going to say. And if anyone wants to know why I think shoulders are really bad, just check out my YouTube channel. So, just so to me, so to actually, have you got any final thoughts, uh, Miku Pink? Here's one thing. What they should do, I think, would look perfect for these, is release like a um, like like an eight inch tall mecha version of each character, and then give us a cloth co- like costume version of Zen Kaiser. It's like the old like you and like your you and your strange like ideas, that. man. I'm sure t- someone from Toei might be listening. But anyway, yeah. let's move on. Well, f- let's finally move on from Zen Kaiser. Just a brief. Oh wait, I got one more thing though to add. Go on about Zen Kaiser. Um, so you know the gear, the Gearlinger, or whatever they call that. Yeah, we've the talked Sentai. about the Gearlinger before, but go on. Um, but like, did you know the voice actress? Uh, like. The voice actress of that is actually the one who did the first superhero time titles and stuff. Oh, no, thanks. For yeah, that. like from what I've heard, she's doing the voices for the um, Sentai Gears in this episode in this series. So, okay, that's cool. It's right. a female from, uh, from what I think America. So, okay, that's cool. Let's move on. So, Gaken no Zukan 50th anniversary book is going to be released soon. Uh, this is, uh, they're basically releasing a big book of the Ultimate Super Sentai pictorials, showing over 300 warriors and conveniently tying in with the mecha theme of that Zenkaiju will have. Now, I've seen a couple of pages from this book, and it really does look like an insane encyclopedia, and they show like, I mean, I didn't even recognise half the mecha to be fair. But they've got like, you know, I've, I've not really seen so much of the ranger shots, but the mecha shots look absolutely amazing. Especially what like where they show uh, Kiba Ranger's mecha from Dai mm-hmm. Ranger. It looked absolutely amazing. So there are some good shots and it gets very technical. Have you guys seen uh, pages from this book at all? Nope. No, I haven't. I would love to take a look though. Uh... Absolutely. I mean, again, like, I mean, I'm not much of a guy who reads think... books. I don't really like books, but it's definitely out there if you like to collect those kind of encyclopedias. Yeah. Is it like a coffee table book? I mean, how many pages? I'm not. I. I mean, I think it's going to be quite. It's, I think it's going to be quite a thick one. I mean, the way that the pages look, the way that they were formatted, it looks like they are going into really high detail in terms of the mecha. In terms mm-hmm. of the ranges, again, I didn't really get a good look at that. So, let's actually talk about the current Sentai, Machine Sentai Kira Major. So, Machine Sentai Kira... So, just before we go on to episode 36, I'm going to mention the movie trailer. So, Kira Major Bebop Dream uh, is the name of the movie. I don't know if you guys have seen the trailer, but have you guys seen? 
Right, have you Mika Pink? I have. Did you Mika Pink? No, I have not seen the trailer. So. All right, so me and Razira will talk about this quickly. So yeah. the so to me it seems like this. You know, so I think it's actually implied in the title anyway. It's like it's almost like you know one of you know most cliche episodes, and we always talk about cliche episodes of Kira Major. Yeah. But you know, like we always you know, like again, I always give Kira Major props for taking a cliche and spinning it on its head. But they've taken exactly. this. They've That's taken, the good thing about Kira. They've taken this cliche and have made it a movie. And whether they put a spin on it, who knows? But it's a movie based on Deep Sleep. I'm assuming they induced Juru or possibly Takamichi. But yeah, we see all these subsequent images, but I think we all know it's all part of a dream sequence anyway, or it most likely will mm-hmm. be, unless they put a spin on it. Your final thoughts on this Zeron? Um, I think there's that. Like, I think the reason why they did this movie is because they still had that one general who's going to be in this movie playing the villain. She she was still alive from based on the epi- like the last episode we which, saw her in. Which villain? Never- um, the female one, not Yodana, but the other um female with the mask and stuff. Well, Crunchula. She survived and huh? Crunchula? No, I don't recall any. No, not Crunchula. It there's four. Um, there's four um villains and stuff. Oh, I, must have forget- I must forget. There's who you're the talking um, female about. commander Yodana, and then there's um um what's it called um 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 Crunchula. Then there's Dark Girl, and there's then Gaza. there's the female. Who um Aladdin um, Galadin whatever uh, fought and his wife fought as well and they almost defeated her but he betrayed them or something and she, like we, that's how um Aladdin's wife got captured into the soul like in the Kira Major Jewel so I think you're talking about Mabushina's mother I uh, who's not yeah. a villain well Mabushina's mother. She almost oh killed that, no! The those villain. are two sisters. Those are two sisters. No, yeah, but they showed up in the episode still. But those, again, I don't both, remember both seeing anything. Them. I don't remember seeing anything like that in this movie trailer, though. I do know who you're talking about now. Yeah, but, she. Well, she's the main villain. If you look up the tra- like the um, trailer information, the, and they said that she's back as the okay. villain. I can't say I read that bit, but all right, that's absolutely amazing. So thanks for that information, Zeron. Right, so let's actually talk about episode 36. And I'm just going to hit this straight off the bat. So I thoroughly enjoyed this episode. It absolutely had a theme that is in my domain. So this is why I'm jumping straight on this. This was totally in my house. Admittedly, the intro made little to no sense. And I was still confused. Like, why was Red and Silver left out at the start? It got even more confusing when the Rangers fell out with the Kirima Stones and Red was actually innocent nonetheless. Anything you guys want to start with? I'll start with Zeron. I'm pretty sure we've seen this episode before in Kira Major. I'm absolutely certain where they would talk sh- like smack about the um, the mecha and stuff. I, I'm pretty. I've swore I've seen this episode before. We're done in this series, so Miku Pink. I thought it was such a blast. Um, I mean, yeah, it is. Definitely I love taking. this episode. I mean, there's like a really classic. Uh, I remember the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers episode with Beamcaster. I vaguely remember that. Yeah, the. I mean, there was the wrapping pumpkin as well. And then, like you know, re- changing people's minds. I um, mean, mm-hmm. I think also radio, a radio-based kaiju. So I, I think uh, a radio-based kaiju are fun. I really thought it was cool to have a turntable kaiju. I did. I loved that. Ah. I like the rap battle. That was actually pretty fun. Like there were some very hardcore dis- disses in the second round and third round. I did not like the first round though. Like those were kind of weak. But as soon as the second and third round started kicking, I was like, hell yeah, roasted. Mm-hmm. It was actually really good. It actually fit like what they were saying. But the first round, it just did not have any rhyme or rhythm, you know. But, you know. Okay, so I'm... Right, so I will say, like, for this episode, uh, there were very little fight scenes for all the obvious reasons. It was clear that they were going to go all in on this theme. I mean, to, like, to kind of address Zeron's point, there are quite a few episodes where the Stones and the Rangers talk smack to each other, but it's always about that team bonding, and it's, like, about making up afterwards, which is absolutely amazing. Like, I love that. Uh, and it, you know, like when it comes to like the whole rapper theme, like, you know, it took me back to when there was like briefly a rapper in Carmen Rider Zero One. But the fact mm. that they had a genuine J Rap MC in this, 
somehow, even though I'm not that much of a fan of J-Rap, it was actually quite amusing to watch these rap battles, as well as listening to the lyrics phonetically. And yes, Yo Donna mm-hmm. definitely provided me at least some fan service. Mm-hmm. You like that fan service? Of course I like that character. fan service, why not? But, you know, I will say it wasn't until the end, till like when the red Kirima Stone turned up and actually those bars actually did sound good and powerful. Right, you want to chime in on this, Mika Pink? I saw a, um, a list recently, I don't know, I think it was uh, Grandmaster Flash put out a list. Dude, streamers. I got so many 80s rap vibes from this, it's insane. Yeah. But, you know, again, it's like those lyrics, you know, reading those lyrics translated, you know, they were actually good and powerful lyrics. And maybe I'm slightly biased in my assessment, but I actually did like the speed the style, the flow, the content, and a lot more, you know, more than the previous verses. And, that, you know, like, I'll let Miku Pink talk about this. Like, the giant kaiju does actually look decent, right? And somewhat larger. It was quite wide. I think, like, it's seriously, this would be, like, a kaiju that would be, like, worthy of doing those, like, a Funko Pop or something like that. And I think that even people that don't, aren't, have no clue that Kira What it is, it. yeah. I get, I can get, I can get behind that. Uh, Zero, any thoughts? Um, well, are we still on the same episode? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, I thought it was a pretty good episode. Um, like, it was not your typical episode, but, it, you know, QMA had been doing that. And I actually did quite enjoy the rap battle, so... They flipped the script a... and turned it on its head. I mean, I'll yeah. just end by, like, you know, because this was kind of the end of Christmas, beginning of New Year episode, so I didn't quite get those Christmas outfits that Green, Pink, and Blue were wearing. I'm just going to throw that in there. So we will... Let's move on to episode 37. So I'm going to get this out of the way from the off. Yes, we did have an epically amazing Pico Taro reference in here. And I am going to continue the rest of this, not actually talk, not referring to that at all, because we know how epic it is. We don't need to talk about it anymore. This episode actually had a lot packed into it. For one, the side storyline was pretty big. And for once, I don't need to use words like trope and cliche, or trope rather, as it was ridiculously original. I would have to, I'd, you know, it would have to be good enough to have been like a filler episode, the side plot anyway. But seeing the story of Senna's personality split into three rather than just a duplication added to an amazing mm-hmm. added to an amazing and interesting dynamic. Some mm-hmm. of the way it unfolded, like dismissing Senna's last fifth, was predictable though. Zeron, what mm-hmm. do you think of this episode? Okay, so if you don't know, this actually does talk about suicide and stuff in the Kimber Major, and this is the first time we actually see them Sentai talk about suicide. I and don't like, think... Whoa, 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 whoa. I mean, like, again, it is a kid's show. Obviously, there is a massive suicide problem in Japan, but I yeah. I think, obviously, th- there was a lot of implication, but I don't think... If I've got to be honest, I don't think they talked about it like that. I think it was more about more self-worth and appreciation. And knowing mm-hmm. your sides rather than something so dark. That's just my opinion, though. Mm-hmm. And I did not like how, um, what's his name? PPAP guy. Um, yeah. I did t- not like how. Like, Muro, he, you're talking um, about basically, Muro. Like, he basically turned her sad self down, saying, oh, we don't need her. We only need these two other. I did not like that. That did that thing very out of character. I don't remember him specific. I mean, I remember the group did, and like I remember like the Senna in four did. But I don't. I'll but be honest. I, I, okay, I'll get you. Uh, do you have any thoughts but, on Miku Pink? Um, yeah. First off, regarding the um, regarding suicide, they did. Remember, they had in the Go Kaiger movie, um, the man who was about to jump off the bridge. Okay. I'll be honest, it's been a million years since I've seen the Go Kaiju movie, but no, I don't. If you count 2020, it's been 20 years today. 20 years to this day when what? the Go Kaiju movie No, out. that, no, 20 years ago to the day is Gao Ranger. Go Kaiju was five years ago. Anyways, um, do you remember how, oh, I don't know if you don't remember it, but they did have a, uh, a Seisha man or, you know, like a salary man who lost his job and kind of lost everything. You know what? I, I, now that you mention it, I know I've seen the whole salary man thing several yeah. times across both Kamen Rider and Sentai, to be fair, but... 
yeah, nonetheless, yeah, like I will say, I mean, you know, in terms of covering such a topic, I'd say they can I would say they were probably more subtle. I mean, I'd say it was oh, probably yeah. more, yeah, like again, I'm not disagreeing completely, but like, I'd probably say it was more emphasized on like accepting a person for, who, you know, a person accepting themselves for who they are yeah. with their strengths as well as their weaknesses. And, you know, I'll say, you know, like, you know, again, like the way that it, you know, like, again, the way it was kind of like they catered to this kind of insecure fifth, it was a touch predictable, as I said, but the more, and, you know, the moral of the story was going to be blatantly obvious, you know, what I've already said about accepting yourself for your strengths and weaknesses. I felt that was obvious to the adults, but at least to, you know, at least it should teach kids something original as well as thought provoking. And yes, you know, just the fact that Green and Pink were hanging out once again, uh, you know, like it felt like they were catering to me for some sort of special fan service again. But like, as for the second half, uh, I will, you know, normally I dislike it when Toku gets too much like J-drama. But the irony here is I did actually like the artistic and dramatic J-drama vibe. And yes, I felt they both looked better with wet hair and without makeup. As for, <laughs> as for the plot progression, so now I'm going to be talking about the main storyline here. Uh, it was kind of predictable, but Yodon definitely looks hench. And I didn't quite get why Yodonna felt the need to try to find Orodin if she was just going to do that anyway. And then she waited for the Orodin mecha thing to fly in like it always does anyway. So technically none of this made any sense. Uh, do you have any thoughts on this Zeron? Um, I didn't like the um the final villain. He kind of looks menacing, very scary. Yeah, I like, like, yeah. like I act, like I had not seen this from a villain in a long time. I think the closest we got to this was Vaglas from Go Busters, and I do hope we get to see more of him because. When he was on screen, I actually got a very menacing vibe from him. So. I thought he was going to say you had a hard on, but anyway, Miku Pink, did you have any thoughts on this? Yeah, um, so first off, we do need to talk about if Yodana is part of Yodan. Oh, he, she is. I think it was established here, but go and, on. And technic, I'm not sure the exact jurisdiction, but Yodana did marry at least most of her fan base. Of course she did. So yes, we're all married to Yodon and Yodonna. How amazing is that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so any final thoughts on episode 37, Mika Pink? Um, I mean, really, the just, I think the the personality twist, I like it. it uh, I really don't know where that's going to go. I don't know if you ever watched uh, the anime Tenchi Muyo. It was um, kind of like an action sci-fi romance that was really popular on uh, America and like early 2000s American anime, you know. Sure. Um, anyways, they had a similar thing where there was a villain on the show who uh, like created part of her own personality and then made it into uh, a spy. Um, I think it was kind of similar to this. It definitely reminded me of that a lot. Um Okay, so Zeron, do you have any final thoughts? Uh, not really. I kind of talked about it, but I do want to see more um, of the main villain because he looked menacing as hell. I got a lot of odds of of, inter- of Aglas. I also got some um dark, like early '80s villain vibe, which is masks mm-hmm. and stuff, because he looked very creepy with it. And sure, I, I, and like I yeah, like I remember that. you saying that, so that's absolutely cool. So let's talk about uh, episode 38, even though episode 39 is airing, has aired today. Uh, so we'll try and get like 39 at some point during the following week. So episode 38, this is where I start complaining that the whole Grant to Stone, Wishing Stone storyline makes no sense. And it's a fat load of cliche. Yes, Takamichi spent the whole series looking for four stones with the fourth just a rock that looks like his uncle's helmet in the middle of nowhere go figure i actually did like the backstory that they gave for takamichi and it made more sense and would have rather have had that on its own without the grant stone nonsense do you have any thoughts mika pink um can you get back to me yeah i, I love shadow i honestly really thought that was a great introduction 
Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's kind of cool to see like a, a kaiju that does remind me of Kamen Rider Snipe a little bit. Boom. Okay. Yeah, but um, also to the point where Shadon is a cool enough design that like, I will even say he did remind me a bit of Gun Caliber. Obviously, maybe he's not Gun Caliber, but... Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know, I can uh, sort of see what you're saying to an extent. I mean, you know, like, I'll say in actual fact, like, I very much enjoyed the Cavity Monster of the Week, which was ridiculously funny and original, even if it had a vibe of puerile nature. It takes me back to the likes of Hurricane if the Kira Majors weren't going to be allowed to take on the Monster of the Week with two br- toothbrushes, right? What do you think of that scene? I'm sorry, the one with the... Uh, the yeah, you know, like, there was a scene where the Kira Majors attack uh, the Cavity Monster with toothbrushes. Uh, I thought it was fun. It was, um... It definitely is a... Uh, going back to, like, one of those kind of ridiculous, like... You know, remember back in, um... On, like, even uh, Go Ranger, when the... Their final attack would transform into something that would be the of exact, course. Like, I mean, like I've yeah. seen the screen, I've seen the clips yeah. of that, and so I kind of know what you're talking about. But you know, I'll say that there were a few other funny moments. Like I'll say there were a few other funny moments, like Crunchula's first scene with Yo Donna, and it still mm. leads on to bigger questions in the build up to the final ten episodes. So, how are we both feeling about the lead up to the final ten episodes, Zeron? Um, I feel like um. I feel like they're definitely planning something good. I, I do think this would actually... I do hope that this finale is going to end the show in a very good, cool way. I want it to get very dark near the end, you know? And then have the shining light beacon, you know? And I wouldn't even mind them actually sh- like um, having it lead directly into Zentiger, you know? It would be very cool if they were to have it be like a somewhat sequel, you know what I mean? I think they vaguely did that in Ghost Sager, and obviously they do this in Kamen Rider many a time. So, you know, I can see your point. So, Uh, just to finish off the episode, Miku Pink, your final thoughts and how you think the last ten episodes will be. So, first off, uh, yeah, playing off what Dragon Zero was saying about continuing villains, um... I don't know if they would have the ability to continue Yodana into another series, but I mean, they have done it before. With uh, Queen Hadrian, she became a cyborg, you know? Uh-huh. Yeah, I vaguely remember that. Uh- um, I would love to see that happen with um, Yodana, if they did find a way to add her into another series. Um, just as a way to give it a little bit of, you know, concrete connection or, like, world building. Um, besides that, yeah, I would like to see the stakes raised a little bit i think sometimes remember the episode where they had the big uh they had the the plant virus vaguely yeah uh and it was more of like that romance plot with uh the focus on curing my pink Mm -hmm. um after that episode that episode felt so high stakes and then they just kind of returned to this like everything's back to normal thing so quickly when real in reality i think it would have been nicer if they had kept like this feeling of kind of stress and anxiety mm-hmm. on the characters obviously give them their chances to like unwind and stuff but it would have been interesting to see them because i mean we actually have less than 10 episodes left right isn't it 45 so we have yeah, I mean, so, again, it's less than 10. I mean, we haven't really been given an episode count, but we do yeah. know that Zenkai just starts on March Actually, 7th. Actually, we have it end on 45. Yeah, 45. I mean, again, that was kind of the rough math I was going off of anyway. <laughs> so, just so less than 10 episodes to go. Let's see how yeah. Kira Major unfolds. But, guys, mm-hmm. uh, everyone watching, thank you very much for tuning in. We hope to see you again next time. And as always, fish through the cam. See you next time.